All right, we'll be studying some this morning in the book of John, chapter 16, verse 1. Turn your Bible there. It's good to be back in the house of the Lord. We ask your prayers. We're going to go to the Lord and work prayer this morning before we get our services started, asking his blessings on the service. Our Father, we come to you this morning uh, depending upon thee and asking thee, Father, that you would give us the word to speak and Father, that uh, each thing that we say would be a blessing to uh, each one here and pleasing to thy ear. In the name of Jesus, we pray and thank you for all your blessings and ask your forgiveness. Amen. Amen. All right, chapter 16 in verse 1, and it's the top of this uh, chapter. It says, Jesus warns the persecuted. And in my Bible, it does. Uh, and it's just a little notation about what this chapter is about. But <clears throat> uh, Jesus had often warned his disciples of the things that were coming. And uh, one of the things was that we will see persecution. And uh, Jesus knew about it because he was persecuted from the time he started his ministry until he was on the cross dying. And Jesus said that in verse 1, of these things have I spoken unto you, <laughs> that ye should not be offended. And this morning I was looking at the word offended, or last night, offended, and there's, there's a couple of places in the Bible that I just studied about, but it says uh, in the uh, Bible, the one of them is that uh, you're not to let your eyes, your eyes offend you, mm -hmm. and uh, and and if it, if your eye offends you, and he speaks of it right eye, he says pluck it out. Right now, it's not mean to wring your hand or fingers up there and pull it out, but it is this meant to correct this problem uh, that you're letting your eyes do to you. Because right. listen, this morning there's there is sin on every hand. Amen. And we, this morning, uh, have a tendency through the flesh to spy on these things, to look mm -hmm. on these things. And, and the television is one of the greater things that the devil uses for us to watch. Right. And he'll slip in a little something, another, a little word or a little something, or another that we a lot of times see before we can turn the television off or change the channel. And so this morning, as we uh, talk about this word offended, we we don't we have not the need to be offended, but if we do, we're to come to uh, if it's if it's a person, we need to come to them and ask them, uh, and uh, if they would if they have offended, you just tell them about it, and right. if they want to say, well, uh, I asked you to forgive me, it's fine, and if they don't listen, you've done your part. Amen. So this morning he says, these things have I spoken unto you that you should not be offended, and this offended means to stumble. Uh, it means to uh, uh, expect uh, things that are, are, are that are not going to be happening to you because listen, a lot of times we pray for things and we ask God, we need we need these things. Mm -hmm. uh, but the thing of it is, God knows our need. Amen. And listen, a lot of times we get offended at God. And, uh, you know, that's not a pleasant thing to do because uh, the Holy Spirit comes back to you and knocks on your door and says, hey, you know what you're doing? And uh, we don't because, listen, we should understand that God has the right to uh, keep us from having these things mm -hmm. or he, he has the right to give them to us or he has a right to uh, put them off in the distance somewhere because in my life, and I'm sure in your life, listen, you've seen things that happen yeah. that God uh, kind of extended out there, and the reason that he did it was for your own benefit. Right. And listen, I told the church last, last uh, Sunday about uh, a, a stove that we had and, a, and a, bur a, a washer and a dryer, and the washer was leaking. And so we decided to buy a washer and dryer. And then we decided to buy a stove. So when we got it and got them all replaced, uh, we pulled the stove thing out, and it was the the cords was burnt so bad that it should have started a fire. Mm -hmm. But this is a, and this is just an example. Right. And listen, these things happen for our benefit. And so right. this morning, if you're offended at something or another. Don't get offended to the point that you can't say, uh, Lord, I'm sorry. 
or you can't go to your brother or your sister and say, uh, I want to talk to you about something that you said or something that you did, and it, it offended me. So you don't need to get to that point because listen, then you're in deeper water. So he says here that you should not be offended or to stumble. They, in verse 2, they shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time shall come that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. Right. And listen, this morning, uh, we want to uh, we want to go to chapter 9 just a little bit and see something here concerning the blind man in chapter 9 and verse 17. Verse 17, 9, 17. And they said, here's the, here, and this is talking about offending. And they, uh, this man was blind, and you know it if you read the Bible study, but this man was blind from his birth. Right. He'd been blind all of his life, and uh, he, his parents had had to take him, take care of him, and all this. But he says that in verse 15, I believe it is. Let me look and see. It makes, uh, uh, yeah, 17, okay, 15. Then again, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. And he said unto them, He put clay upon my eyes, and I washed and do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? Amen. And there was a division among them. They said unto the blind man again, What sayest thou of him that hath that he that opened thine eyes? And he said, He's a prophet. Amen. And done, done, done been above, above him about this thing before after he'd received his sight. But notice, but the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called his parents to, uh, uh, parents of him and had received his sight. And they asked them, saying, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he see? Now here's where it comes the thing about the, the threat, the threat and, the, and the thing that they were, were fearing about uh, saying anything about this to the Pharisees. But by, but what, by what means he now seeth, we know not. Or who opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age, ask him, he shall speak for himself. <laughs> now they had these parents, uh, they were going to send him in verse 22. So he says, these words spake his parents because they feared the Jew, for the Jew had agreed already that if any man did confess that he is, was Christ, he should be cast out of the synagogue. And I read this to let you think about on this thing. Listen, we're coming up, as Brother Larry's already said, on an election. And if things if things go like the Republican Party says that the Democrats are going to do, listen, we're going to be we're going to be offended. We're going to be charged with a lot of things. We're right. going to be forced into a lot of things that we don't need to be. And listen, this is something this morning that I would encourage every one of you this morning. If the things don't go right, and listen, the things go the other way. Listen, it's going to be like my old stove. Listen, it's going. To, it may not be right, and it may be burnt up. But the thing of it is, God will correct it. But Amen. Damages me, and it's the same way this morning within our country. Listen, God is in charge. I believe God put Trump in there the first time, and I think that uh, he he don't change his mind. So I, you know, this is my thoughts on it. Mm -hmm. But the thing of it is, whatever happens. Don't get offended mm -hmm. because that's exactly what the devil is telling you about this morning, about this virus and all these things that are going on. Listen, he's deep in it. He's knee deep in it. Amen. And he is encouraging people to stay in. He's conditioning people to stay in. He's conditioning people to take the mark of the beast. Amen. And he's conditioning them even with this thing of sticking your uh, head up there and letting them put that thing on there to see if you got any temperature. Listen, it's a sign, it's things that's coming to pass, and we need to be aware of these things and not be offended, but be ready when the time comes that we should, uh, we should be ready for it. So he said here, in, back in our lesson this morning, in verse 2, or verse 3, and these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor Amen. me. And listen this morning, that is our that is our problem this morning with the world. The, the world has lost any uh, contact 
with the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. They, they put their approval upon every kind of a ungodly thing that can go on. And so they have lost all contact with the world and they're out for the pleasures of the world and for the gain that they can get and put in their pockets. Yeah. And Amen. that's the reason why that if they have to step on someone to do it, they'll do it. And if they have to starve someone to do it, they'll do it because right. they have no love for this country. You're right. They have no love at all. And so this morning, uh, be aware, be aware that the fight is on Amen. and the devil is, he's mad as a wasp and he, he's been mad at Jesus Christ, or, or he's been mad because Jesus Christ defeated him at the cross, Amen. and he knows, he knows deep down where his last days or last place will be, and that's to be thrown into the lake Amen. of fire. And so that's why he's all upset and, and, and stirred up, and he's, he's using these people that doesn't know the Lord, has never been saved, he's using them, they're his children, and listen, people, he's guiding them and he's directing Amen. them and he's pushing them right towards us that are few. But listen, God is with us and uh, God has never lost a battle. Amen. And his children uh, are behind and he's in front. And so take heed and take uh, uh, great pleasure in knowing Amen. this morning if you're saved and you're uh, uh, in a child of the Lord, that listen, it may, it may be death, but the thing of it is, you're taken care of. And so if, Amen. One, if one of us, if, if one of us has to die, or all of us has to die, listen, it's it's just it's just a passing thing. This is our home, you know. And so, hey, what have we got to worry about? Because we'll go to be with the Lord. And so here again, and uh, he's talking about in verse three that uh, they have not known the Father nor me. And listen, one of the things in Acts of in Acts, I want to read to you uh, concerning these the un ungodly people in Acts uh, 7. Look at it, Acts 7, 54. Acts 7, 54, talking about Stephen. And this is the, uh, the killing of Stephen. And when they heard these words, and, and of course, uh, what what Stephen was talking to him about, he said, you still connect an uncircumcised heart. And he called them just what they were. And listen, I'm telling you this morning, God's word tells you what these people are that are trying to rule our country this morning. Amen. They they have not the love of God in them. Amen. And what little, those that had anything on they've turned it away and they're afraid to even use that. But here he said, you still connect an uncircumcised in heart and ear, you do always resist the Holy Ghost as your father did so Amen. to you. But notice in verse 54, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. And this this morning, people, we may have the opportunity to stand up before some of these governors and presidents Amen. and all of this and tell them you uncircumcised in heart and they probably will kill us. Right. But the thing of it is, if you listen to this, this morning, he didn't suffer. Stephen didn't suffer because he said, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up from steadfast into Amen. heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Amen. So this morning, this is his, this is his uh, elite entrance out of this world. And he says... They cry, and then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witness laid down their clothes at the young man's feet, whose name was Saul. Right. We know Saul. We know what, what he stood for, how he persecuted the church, how he persecuted the people. One place there he said they'd go in and just drag the people out of the houses and carry them before the law and cast them into jail and they'd, they'd find them guilty and, and that was it. So he said here, and they stoned Stephen's calling upon the Lord God and said, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my sight. Now Amen. here again, he wasn't, he wasn't offended. Now, I, and, you, and I know you, you, but listen. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, lay not this sin to her charge. Amen. And listen, people, he knew, he knew what that sin would do to him, and he asked the Lord not to lay that sin to their charge. 
And, uh, and, 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 and when he had said this, he fell asleep. And so we see here that the, the leaving of this world was not all that great, but it wasn't all that uh, hurtful either. But anyway, we want to see these things in verse 3. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. Amen. You notice in, uh, as the Jesus speaks and his, of his leaving and his comfort, uh, coming comfort, he says, but these things have I told you that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them, and these things I said unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. And notice here over in chapter 15, over here in 6, he says, If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burnt. Now these are some of the things that Jesus foretold these apostles. And he said, If you abide in me, and my word abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. And uh, uh, in, in this, he is, he is insinuated to, to love one another. If you, if you abide in me and my word abides in you. So if, if God's word abides in you, you can love someone else, or even if they come up Amen. and touch you on the face. But if you have a, a brother over here that the love of God abides in him and you have the same thing, listen, you can fellowship together and you can enjoy sure. uh, your conversation. You can serve the Lord together. And so Amen. he says, in this, uh, as the, in verse 9, as the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you, continue in my love. And then he says, and if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, Amen. even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that your my joy might be made in you, and that your joy might be full. Amen. And this is my commandment. That you love one another. That's it. And people this morning, though they stole, throw rocks at Stephen, though they killed him, he prayed, Lord, don't let us into them. And it's our duty this morning, uh, and I know this flesh, this flesh rejects it. He rejects it to the to the the hundredth time. The flesh, the flesh rejects this people. You're right. But listen, we have an opportunity this morning to take this. Our spirit, our spirit that's saved, it'll never sin again. This old flesh is going to sin daily. You're right. And you know this morning, and I know that this flesh is hard to control. Mm -hmm. And these foolish thoughts go through your brain, and all these things go on in your body, and you have to come back. God, please forgive me. Please right. forgive me. But listen, that's the thing to do, and you're supposed to, and you've got to keep this flesh under subjection. You're right. And, Father, and let the Father's love be in you. In you. So he said here, uh, here is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. And so this is some of the things this morning of being offended, and some of the things that it covers here. But uh, here again in verse, verse 5, but now he's, after he told them that he was going, but now I go my way to him that sent me. Mm -hmm. And none of you ask of me whether, whether goest thou. Now over in John's gospel, I think I've got it marked here. John's gospel in 733. I think I'm trying to 733. Bear, bear with me on the old bear. <clears throat> 733. Notice, and then said Jesus unto them, Yet a little while I am with you, and then I go unto him that sent me. Ye shall, ye shall seek me, and this is what is happening over here. Ye shall seek me, and shall not find me, and where I am, thither ye cannot come. Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go that we shall not find him. Will he go in, unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? What manner of saying is this? This that he has said, ye shall seek me and shall not find me, and where I am thither ye cannot come. So here again in our lesson, he is he is telling the the, 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 the people here, but now I go my way. So this is it's the presence now. He was he was telling a future, but now he's brought it to the present. He said, but now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you ask me whether goest thou. But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, 
I tell you the truth. It is expedient. It is necessary. It is a must for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. Listen, this morning, people, with this old flesh we was talking about, and that Holy Spirit is dwelling in this flesh. This is a temple of the Holy Spirit. And listen, he's dwelling in there, and he's, he's talking to that flesh, and he's telling that flesh, no, 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 all the right. time. And listen, the flesh is fighting back and fighting back, and finally, after so long a time, the flesh comes to realize, hey, I got to do something about this because he's worrying me to death. I lay down in the night, I can't sleep, I go out to work and I can't work. Listen, and so he comes back to the Lord through the through the Holy Spirit and the Spirit right. is directing him and he asks forgiveness of them sin. But listen, it's not for long because the first time he comes, he, the, the chance comes that the eyes are open and he sees something, he lusts after it he, or he cries after it or he wants it. Listen, it's sin again. And so right. it's over and over and over and over. And in Romans 7, 14, I believe it is, Paul said, Oh, wretched man that I am. Right. And he was talking about the flesh. He wasn't talking about his spirit. But right. he said, Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of sin? And listen, we know this morning when we die <laughs> that this flesh is going to stay in the ground. Our spirit will ascend to the Father. The flesh will lay there and rot in the time when the resurrection happens. This flesh will take on immortality and it will arise, unite with our flesh, our spirit, and we'll have a glorified body and we'll go to be with the Lord. Exactly. Thus so saith the Lord and we forever will be. And so here he's saying this, but here he says, but Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient. It is expedient for everyone to hear these things. If it be here or if it be on the on the airwaves, hot, we need to we need to spread it. We need to tell them Amen. the truth about what's going on. And so here he says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. The truth is that it's expedient for you to know and for me to know that Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary, went to the grave, resurrected, and ascended to the Father. And listen, we will do the same thing. We'll, our spirit, our soul will go to the, our body will go to the grave, and our spirit will go to the one that gives it. And one day it will re be resurrected, and it Amen. will unite with the, with the soul, and we will be home forever in a glorified body. And that's the only way that we can bow down before God and worship Him. It's in a glorified body. You're right. Listen, we can pray to God with our spirit. The old flesh can fight it all it wants to. But listen, we pray to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ takes it and delivers it to the Father. The Father sees the blood, and he cannot deny the blood. Amen. And that's the way that it gets there, people. And, and this old flesh is not doing anything whatsoever that's important. But listen, this Holy Spirit that's dwelling within us is guiding that prayer up to heaven through our, and our spirit is making it prayer. And so that's the way that we as God's people need to get a prayer answered. And that's the only way that Amen. we can get a prayer answered. So never in verse um, eight, and when he is come, he will reprove, talking about the Holy Spirit, reprove or convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more, of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Okay. And I have yet many things, Jesus saying to them, say unto you, but you cannot bear them now because they were, they were grieved because Jesus and said, I go away, and they understood what he was talking about. Then they didn't uh, earlier in the chapter, but they understood that he was going away, and they right. were grieved at this, and because they had followed him, and they had loved him, and they 
seeing all the works that he had done, and they were madly in love with the Lord Jesus Christ in a spiritual way, and they did not want to see him go just like our old flesh don't like to see one of our loved ones go. But listen, it had to be, and so Jesus said it's, it's expedient that this happened. And so he said here, uh, how, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He is our. He is the messenger. He is the one that shall speak to our souls. He says. Amen. He says this. He says, "But whatsoever ye shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you, or he shall declare it unto you." All things that the Father hath are mine, therefore say I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. And so Amen. he's going to take of his teachings, which is recorded, and he's going to show these same things which the word has shown you this morning, even the necessity of him going, uh, the necessity of him dying. Of, the, of all the things that he told the apostles here. And so he says here, telling them that our so your sorrow will turn to joy. Notice, a little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to my Father. Amen. To the Father. And what a shout when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back to this world. Amen. God tells him, go get my children. And with a shout of the archangel, he shall say, come up hither. What a joyful shout. What a great sound. What a, what a ringing that will be in our Amen. ears. And we can, as we go up, we can rejoice. We can holler. We can do everything. And we'll be free. And we'll be able to do these things that we've always wanted to do. But we'll be out of the presence of this thinking flesh. That That's right keep us back and to hinder us. And so this is uh, some of the lesson here that uh, I hope that uh, some of it has been a blessing to you. I hope that you'll take it, reread it, and uh, uh, study it, and uh, enjoy it. Because what I have read, not what I have said, but what I have read is truth. Amen. It's truth. There's no, there's no, there's no wrong in it. But now maybe I may have said something with a slip of a tongue or somebody that don't accept that. That's, I, I mean, that's, I'm sorry if it is, but that's between uh, them and the Lord. And so this morning, we hope that, uh, that you've been blessed with this. We Amen. Pray to the Lord and word of prayer and ask his forgiveness. Father, again, we ask you to, to forgive us for we fail you. And Father, we thank you for this uh, if, uh a time that we've had the pleasure of reading that word. Watch over us this day, we pray in the name of Jesus. We thank you. Amen. Amen.